booster is light as you lift off, when you press back in your seat, the noise level goes up and your accelerating is just absolutely amazing. Look down out the window at the planet, you don't see the borders of countries. You basically look down, you see one whole Earth and one human race. For the first time in the history of the planet, we have joined hands to do a mission like this. It's a link between where we have been and then where we're going uh, in the future. The first time in our American history, we have permanent human attendance in space that's not supposed to end. Great things happen because of teams, not because of, of individuals. And in the case of, of this movie, uh, it was successful because of the teamwork with uh, Lockheed Martin and NASA and the IMAX Corporation, bringing their strengths together as a good team, uh, creating what they needed to create so that this movie could be produced and distributed. It's been a terrific relationship that we've had for these, for these years. Uh, because I think it's the best example of a private-public partnership that has uh, benefited everybody who has come in touch in contact with it. Every time I look at Space Station, I'm in awe of what a miraculous achievement it was to construct such a complex thing in orbit. It's humankind's nature, I think, to want to explore and go and, and to continue to try to find answers to all kinds of scientific questions. And the space station affords us that opportunity. What it has proved is that um, different cultures, different countries can work together and do this, and that we can build structures on the moon and we can go to other planets, and the, this is the bridge there. Showing daily life in space is important because I think people don't know what we do. Daily living in space without gravity is a, is a challenge on its own. If you think about the way you change your clothes, you know, you take your clothes off, you drop them on the floor or wherever they go, and you put on your new clothes. Well, when it's all floating, how do you change your clothes? How, how do the socks not get away? Well, floating is a wonderful sensation. It's a lot like being in a swimming pool, but without the viscosity of the water to slow you down. You can move across a room by just pushing off, and you float across very gently. You can flip upside down. You can work in any direction, any orientation. It's a wonderful way to work. Uh, and it's a, a great way just to live, to float around like that. On the space station, you sleep in your own little sleep compartment in a sleeping bag, and you zip it up and it's got some bands that make it tight and it feels like you're tucked in. Now, whatever you don't tuck in kind of floats. Now, because there's no gravity, you know, your hand doesn't fall asleep, it feels a little creepy floating out there. The other challenges of, of living in space uh, are surprising, is there's no radio station, there's no television, there's no online internet. We basically didn't have the noise of life that flows in our American culture in a, in a perpetual sense. And the first three weeks you missed it, I missed it. And then about three weeks into it, I was like, you know, I don't miss it so much anymore. And life actually became very stress-free in that you didn't have all this noise of life tugging on you all day long. All you had to do was roll out of the sleeping bag, float over to the breakfast table, talk about what were you gonna do that day, and basically, either get, get on your workout, which is two hours every day, or get on your job. We actually had a, an exercise bike that we took with us, and um, for some reason there's a seat on it. Well, there's no gravity to hold you in the seat, so you, you know the seat really isn't all that necessary. But what you do need to have is, a, is a, like a lap belt, a safety belt, to hold you down. When you're in space, you're not using those muscles at all, so we make a you know, concerted effort uh, and make a point of exercising as much as we can when we're up there, just so when you come back, the change from being weightless to being weighing what you do uh, is not that drastic. You actually do sweat in space. Sweat just stays on you as balls. And so when you fling your head, a sweat ball goes off in one direction. So if you are particularly meticulous about how you'd like your spaceship not covered with sweat balls, 
You're normally aiming yourself and a towel at somebody who's exercising and mopping them. How do you take a shower in space? Um, well, let's just say that hygiene is very important. So you take a ball of water, and you can see in the film, Sergei squirts a ball of water on himself, and he rubs it around, and we have a liquid soap, and you soap yourself, and you squirt on another ball of water, and you take the little bath towel, and you take that off. The most fun is having no gravity, and the most challenging is having no gravity, because things never stay where you put them. So you are forever chasing down things that you haven't spent your whole life having to chase down. You let something go, and you turn your back, and it's gone.